This is Tom Bernanke and today we're talking about the big toe joint. So when your big toe joint buckles out like that and the big toes going underneath the second toe, that's called a bunion. There are some great proven tr tricks that work for me in clinic. They were great. And a lot of the times we don't have to do any surgery at all. So I'm gonna tell you why it's happening and how to keep it away. And then we're gonna go over those tricks you can do and then we will talk about whether you need surgery or not and the types of surgery. And we're starting right now. This is what does not cause bunny information. I saw a video that's got like 3 million views saying eat more calcium. That is crazy. There's zero scientific evidence saying calcium has anything to do with the bunny information. Bunny information is a biomechanical dislocation. Number two, High heels can exacerbate bunion formation, but they're not a cause. It's not just your shoe gear, but the problem is your shoe gear can make your foot flatten out. So when your ankle buckles out, that makes your big toe joint land improperly and bend like this. So a bunion right here is, it's essentially the dislocation of this big toe joint like this. So when it starts to dislocate, you could see that bumps really sticking out there. And these two little bones down here called your sesamoids, they dislocate. Big toe joint starts to come underneath the second toe. All pretty much all people that I see develop bunions, they have some form of flat foot. So you have to fix your flat foot as you fix your bunion. Sometimes if you fix your flat foot, your bunion gets better all on its own if there's no arthritis yet. So one thing I like to do and that people can probably evaluate with their bunion is if the bunion's dislocated like this, so say your bunion's dislocated like this, if I can pop it back straight like this, if it goes straight, that means it's not arthritic. But if you have grinding and if you have pain, so see if I take the big toe joint right here and I bend it and it's grinding, it's not really bending, that might mean you have arthritis. If you have arthritis, that might mean you need surgery. But if there is no arthritis and you still have some movement, potentially some of these home remedies and home treatments can be effective. Your ankle is not straight. Your ankle usually buckles in like this and then your big toe joint gets pushed up like this. So you could see when it flattens, your ankle flattens and then the big toe joint and the foot flatten like this. Your bunion is a symptom of your foot flattening out, your knee buckling in, your hip twisting out, your lower back pain. All these things cause bunion pain. High heels and shoes alone do not cause bunions. Theoretically, you could be a very healthy petite woman with great flexible leg muscles and you could wear I've seen ladies wear high heels all the time and never develop a bunion. And the bottom line is they don't have any of the associated risk factors. But at the same time, somebody with all the risk factors could wear the high heels. So kind of a heavier person with no flexibility, with knee arthritis, with hip pain. If that person wears the high heels, their foot is toast. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. And this toe, the ligaments, will start to bend and rupture because they're trying to support your foot weight. What we see in studies are if you fix the big toe joint with surgery, but the foot keeps flattening out, the ankle keeps flattening out, it will, within about five years, if the person doesn't fix those underlying problems, within about five to 10 years, almost 50% of people can reoccur. You know, that's a rough estimation, but there's studies ranging all over the place. Depending on the bunion surgery, if you don't fix the flat foot, the tight knee, the tight hip, these can reoccur significantly. So it might even be pointless to fix the bunion unless you fix those underlying issues. So the true causes of bunion formation are if your ankle's too tight, your foot twists out. So if your foot's twisting out, the big toe's landing improperly and it bends it every time you walk. So you can do that because of a tight hamstring, a tight lower back, hip problems, knee problems, all those things might be the cause of your bunion. So how do you diagnose a bunion? Everybody knows you have a big bump, but there's four major causes. Is it arthritis? Is it a bunion? Is it turf toe? Is it numbness, is it sesamoiditis? Here's why you wanna see your podiatrist. You don't wanna be treating the wrong uh, cause because all four have different treatments and solutions. 
Number two, it's very important to get your biomechanics evaluated. So if you're tighter in one calf, one hamstring, one knee, that's the real problem that causes your bunion until eventually your bunion develops arthritis and you do need surgery to fix it. Most people don't need surgery if you can fix those underlying problems, but the tough part is you probably should have a biomechanical expert evaluate you and see why it's happening. That's where a podiatrist could come in. And number two, you get an x-ray by your podiatrist. So you can actually see what's going on. Is it arthritis? Is it a bunion? Is it turf toe? Is it numbness? Is it sesamoiditis? Is it those two little bones underneath there? Because they all have different treatments. You could also develop a hammer toe. So a hammer toe is, you could see when your big toe, when your second toe bends like this, that's a hammer toe. So usually the big toe comes underneath the second toe like this, and that's the problem. Things that have worked very well for me in certain circumstances, and they can, in some cases, reverse people's bunions. I've seen people come back after a year or two with a completely reversed bunion. Number one is your foot's flattening out. You gotta fix your flat foot. The best way to do that is, look at that. I'm pushing as hard as I can. Well, it's slipping there, but watch this. In an orthotic, I can push pretty hard. It maintains the arch, but watch this. Look at how easily it flattens out on a flat surface, but watch this. An orthotic basically maintains the bones properly so your foot does not flatten out. Look at when your ankle's bent out like this, you land on the inside of your big toe and it bends up and in. When your foot is straight, the big toe cannot bend. So you can see that's a pretty straight big toe there. But when the foot bends and flattens out, the big toe bends in. A great orthotic with a groove for your big toe joint and a stable heel is the single most effective thing. When people wear good orthotic, over time with good shoes, this is when I've seen over a year or two, the bunion pain get better. Number two, you want a really good shoe. So the main thing is, is when I take this in here, for a lot of people, I can feel the bunion right there. So what happens is I can feel that bump right there and there's no stitches, it's all soft mesh the big toe joint rubs against that part of the shoe. The important part is you still have a little bit of a bump, but it's no longer rubbing against hard stitching. Like in a dress shoe, stitching in that wrong spot can rub against your big toe joint and that can cause crippling pain. That crippling pain could be causing all your pain. So simply getting mesh in the right spot can fix it. But there's more. Getting back to the flat foot portion, you need a stiff back, a stiff sole, and a bendable front. So that bendable front plus the mesh in the right spot plus a good orthotic like this. Look at this. It's not collapsing. It doesn't collapse. Your ankle's straight, your knee's straighter, your big toe joint's straighter. It has mesh in the right spot. That right there, doing those two things, people feel significantly better right away. And there was more, don't worry. So it's not just the orthotic and shoe because I know those can be expensive options for people. I know you want the splints and the gel pads and the correctors. Injections, does an injection work for a big toe joint? I wouldn't recommend it for a bunion. Maybe for a crippling arthritis like hallux rigidus, it would be a good option. But generally, I haven't found a lot of permanent relief unless it's somebody with like crippling pain that needs to get through a vacation for a couple days, possibly. So the next thing is, for your bunion, check this guy out right here. That's the gel pad right there. So putting that gel pad on your big toe joint right there, that will cushion it. So inside the shoe, you've already got the good orthotic, the good shoe, that gel pad protects it very well. You can see there's a lot of different brands. That first one was even more protective than this one, but this holds the toe a little bit uh, better because it has that spacer in the middle and then it prevents the rubbing on the inside. You also have, see these gel pads I can put on the big toe, the gel pad. I'm not a huge fan of those. That's more tip of the big toe problems. The bunion splint at night. It feels good while you wear it, but the real problem is you could stretch it all night long for eight hours, but then for 12 hours the next day you're walking and your foot's flattening out and your big toe joints uh, bending back this way. So 
one pound of force with like a little splint, is it gonna counteract your body weight over tens of thousands of steps during the day? It won't. And unfortunately, this has been studied. There's no real results. The only real way I could see this working is if somebody's in a nursing home and they don't really walk and they wear that pretty much all the time, your toe will be straight. But the second you start walking away again and your ankle buckles out, that big toe is gonna buckle out again and dislocate. Bunyan socks, I actually love the Bunyan socks. So the Bunyan socks are like little mittens for each finger, but they go on to the big toe joint, the second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe individually, and they ha can sometimes have that gel pad built into the big toe joint. Do they last forever? No, but for people who are runners, joggers, these can work really well. And then you could even put the gel pad on over the sock. So these work well for the big toe joint and for the fifth toe joint, the Taylor's Bunyan. So I'm a big fan, if you're a runner, wearing Bunyan socks, and putting even a stronger sleeve over the Bunyan socks, that works really well. I've had a lot of people have success, but the problem is, the correctors, the splints, the gel pads, they cushion you. And it's almost like you have a bad habit and this is just letting you get away with more until you eventually crash completely. So the problem is with creams, with anti-inflammatories, with gel pads, with all that kind of stuff, they're more symptomatic. They make you feel better without really correcting the underlying problem. And then the bunion just keeps getting worse until you do develop arthritis. If you're gonna fix it, I highly recommend the orthotic, the shoes, and then if you need more to get through a workday, that's when the gel splints, the protectors, and the socks come through. And that can help for like marathons and long runs if you only get inflamed towards the end of your run.